Since we did Vienna a long time ago, it's long overdue that we took a trip 50 kilometers or so down the Danube to the Slovakian capital. Here are the stadiums and arenas of Bratislava, Slovakia. Stadium Pasienki. Pasienki means pasture, so it's effectively called Pasture Stadium. I would assume that's because it was once a grass field, but now it has of course been completely transformed into a grass field, with the addition of an ovular concrete structure built into the landscaped earth around it. There is pasture within the stadium and on the outside, so it certainly lives up to that name. It might be hard to believe, but from 2009 to 2018, it was home to the country's biggest club, Slovan Bratislava. However, the reason for that was that their old ground had been closed and their new ground wasn't opened until 10 years later. We'll get to that one next. You may have heard of Bud Light, but there is now a new non-alcoholic alternative called the Floodlight by Coca-Cola. It's only available at this ground and, oh. It appears that the Floodlight by Coca-Cola has been replaced by an unbranded knockoff. Tehalne Pola is the home of Slovan Bratislava that I referred to earlier. It was built on the site of the old Tehalne Pola, which in turn was built on the site of a brickyard. The name translates to brick field. Unfortunately, there aren't any reminders of the past. No bricks were used in the construction. Just metal, plastic, glass, etc. Modern materials. Having said that, the original stadium didn't make use of bricks either. It's a missed opportunity if you ask me. Either way, it's a good looking stadium. And it does have at least one distinctive design feature. That being the rather large office tower embedded into the southwestern corner of the stadium. I would say it seems like a good place to work, but an office is still an office. Ugh, they probably have to wear ties. If I ever become a politician, I'll definitely be running on an anti-tie platform. Ironically, I'd probably go on to tie for last place. Uh, anyway, this ground is also known as Slovakia's National Stadium because it's the main home of the national football team, although they do often play in other cities. The good thing about being a small country is that no matter where they play, it's not too far away. Next door is Peugeot Arena, which is the main venue at the Slovak National Tennis Center, which hosts the annual Peugeot Slovak Open, a relatively obscure event. For example, this year's winner is ranked 205 in the world. Like many tennis arenas nowadays, it has a retractable roof. Come to think of it, that is also something it has in common with many Peugeots. I don't like Peugeots. Not since one of them nearly ran me over. And I know what you're gonna say, not all Peugeots are like that. It's just that one bad Peugeot, spoiling it for the good, honest, hard-working Peugeots out there that steer clear of pedestrians. But I don't know man, I think those Peugeots are just mean-spirited by nature. Oh wait a minute, it was a Volkswagen. Starting SKP Inter Dubrovka. This place is currently home to a couple of teams, including the one in its title. But perhaps the biggest team in this ground is the Bratislava Monarchs, an American football team, who are not only the biggest, but also the very first American football club in Slovakia. They formed just a few years after the NFL was first televised in the country in 1993. The stadium is certainly not in great condition, but at least most of the capacity is coming from covered seating. A lot of NFL stadiums can't say the same. GoPass Arena This humble little basketball arena is actually a bit of an architectural icon in the city, owing to its unique design that was ahead of its time. I mean, just looking at it, you wouldn't think it was constructed in communist Czechoslovakia 62 years ago. The interior was recently renovated in a dramatic way. It went from these dark, drab and tired looking stands, to this bright and clean interior. It looks incredible. I'm loving the orange and grey mosaic colour scheme of the seating. The shape of the stands is also distinctive. It somewhat follows the shape of the roof. That almost makes its way all the way down to ground level beyond the baselines. I can see why it's so iconic. Andre Nepola Arena is the biggest arena in town. It too is architecturally unique. I'd imagine it's a little more divisive though, as it looks as though the architect was drunk when drawing up the design of the glass facade on one side, 
he needs to switch to drinking Floodlights by Coca-Cola. It is a good looking exterior overall though. Much like many European hockey arenas, this one started its life as an outdoor venue. It was actually the first artificial ice rink in the country. Then there was a roof added to it in 1957. However, an even bigger change came when the arena was almost entirely rebuilt starting in 2009, which also added two practice rinks next door. Oh, and by the way, Andre Napella, whom the arena is named after, was actually a figure skater. He won gold at the 72 Winter Olympics. Slovakia has only won about a couple dozen gold medals in their history. That's the Winter and Summer Olympics combined. And those were the stadiums of Bratislava. Thanks for watching, have a good one.